Hey guys, and welcome to your next advanced C++ and graphics tutorial. In this episode, what we're going to be doing is drawing our first uh, triangle to the screen using OpenGL. Now, we're not going to learn the most modern version of OpenGL just yet, just because it's a lot harder to get something to first be drawn to the screen. So what we're going to do is set everything with OpenGL up, and we're going to draw using a very old uh, deprecated, and the word deprecated means basically not supported anymore, version of OpenGL called immediate mode OpenGL or fixed function pipeline programming and we actually don't want to use this pretty much ever we're only going to use it in this episode because it's very very slow and you'll learn more about why it's slow in the future so first thing we need to do is something we forgot to do in the last episode, which is do error checking for our SDL create window. If SDL create window fails, we don't know because uh, we're not checking it. Uh, so before we actually check that, let's make our little helper function up here at the top. It can just be, you know, a, a, just a little function that's not in main game. We'll probably make an error uh, file somewhere else later uh, to have proper error checking. But for now, we'll just do a little quick version. So we're going to say void uh, fatal error. And let's pass in a std string, uh, error string, and that'll print out something for us. So what let's do is let's say std uh, c out error string, and then std indel. And then let's also do std c out enter any key to quit, like that. And then we'll do int temp, and we'll do cn temp. And, uh, oh, that's right, we have to include string. I always forget that. Include string. And what we should also do is uh, exit the game, and it's stdc, and we should exit the game after this happens. And there's actually an SDL function that'll exit from anywhere in our, our game code. We can just call SDL quit like that, and that will just quit the game. So anytime we have a fatal error, it's going to print out the error string that we give it, enter any key to quit, and it'll quit. So let's come back down here to the window and let's do a little error checking on it. So if window is equal to null pointer, and if I'm typing too fast, just pause the video. I just don't want these videos to be too long. So if the window is equal to the null pointer, and, oh, and I'll also probably put the code in the description this time. Then we're going to do a fatal error and we're going to say uh, SDL window could not be opened or created. There we go. And... That's good, so that will do the fail error and quit. Now that we've done error checking there, we can start working with OpenGL. So the first thing we need to do is do what's called creating an OpenGL context. We need an OpenGL context to basically store all of our OpenGL related things like our, our vertex buffer objects, which we will learn about, all our textures and things like that. It basically just stores the context of all our OpenGL stuff, hence the name. And we're going to just associate it with our window. So for now, the context will just be bound to our window and we won't even have to store the context object because it's gonna be in our window. So we can just create a local SDL GL context variable. So this will be our context. We're gonna throw away the context variable after init systems exits because we're going to give the context to the window. And we're gonna say, uh, we'll just call it context or GL context equals, and we're going to say SDL GL create context. And here's where we give it to the window. We just pass the window in as a parameter, and it will uh, set up the GL context and give it to the window, so we don't need to store it. Now let's do error checking. If GL context is equal to null pointer, then we're going to do a fatal error, and we're going to say uh, SDL GL context could not be created, like that. And what did I, context, ah, there we go, context. <clears throat> so that will set up our OpenGL context so that we can actually use OpenGL. And there's one more thing we want to do. We want to call glue init. And what glue init is going to do is it's going to initialize glue. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry, voice is a little hoarse today. So glue init will set up glue and it's going to do what's called uh, getting all our extensions set up. Uh, you don't really need to know how that works and you actually don't have to make this function call to make uh, OpenGL calls right now uh, but this just comes in handy because it sets up things uh, if, if your hardware for instance doesn't exactly support everything this will kind of help take care of that. So all we got to do is call glue init uh, but we can do a little error checking. Uh, glue init returns a GL enum variable which is like an error code. So let's go ahead and catch that. So we'll say GL enum uh, error equals glue init. And then we're going to say if error is not equal to, and it's a, it's a type of enum 
Uh, I think, let's see if we can go look at what all the enums are. Uh, it doesn't say here, but we can always Google it, but I can just tell you because I know what the one we're interested in. If the error is not equal to glue OK, so glue OK is zero. So if this returns a zero for the GL enum, and this is not an enum class, it's just a regular enum, which is why we don't have to do a scope here. Actually, we can probably peek definition here. Yeah, oh, it's not even an enum. It's uh, pound defines. So this is, I don't even really like these things. You don't, you don't want to use pound defines, but that's what they did, so whatever. So we have glue OK, glue no error, glue error, no GL version, all these different kinds of errors. If we wanted to, we could uh, check the different errors and actually print out a unique error message for each, but I don't really care about that. I'm just going to say for now, if it's not equal to glue OK, so if we didn't initialize glue, we're going to say uh, fatal error could not initialize glue. There we go, and that will quit. So that should be all the initialization logic we need to add. Now we need to actually add a render, uh, or a drawing function to our game loop. So let's go ahead and add a function up here. So we have process input, let's also make a void draw game. And I use the term draw whenever I want to like make triangles and put them on the screen. That's it's a, a, good, a good term to use. So we're gonna say draw game. So I'm gonna copy this, and let's paste it under our process input here. And we'll do the usual things where we copy main game colon colon and set everything up. There we go. So this will draw our game. So let's go ahead and call it here, draw game. And there's a lot of little things we need to set up, but we're really going to only have to set these up once. I'll try to remember them all. If I forget one of them, I might have to pause the video. So the first thing we want to do is we want to call a function that's called GL clear depth, like that. And this is going to take just a variable. You're just going to want to put 1.0 in here. That's a good variable. This basically just sets a variable that tells OpenGL what uh, depth it should clear to. And you don't really need to know what that means. Just set it to a 1, and that's fine. Next, what we need to do is call GL clear. And this is going to basically clear uh, our screen. Because each time we draw the game, we want to clear our buffer. So what we're going to do is we're going to type GL color buffer bit right here. And this is going to clear the color buffer, which means basically just, you know, when you draw triangles, it's going to put color on the screen. We want to clear that. And then what we want to do is this is not something I've taught you. I, I do need to teach you this. We're going to type uh, just like an or where we type two ors, but we're just going to type one or. So we're just going to type one vertical line. This is the bitwise or. And what this is going to do is it's going to combine two variables. It's going to combine two bits. I will make a tutorial on this very soon. So we're going to combine GL color buffer bit with GL depth buffer bit. So if we combine both of these bits, what it's going to do is it's going to clear the color buffer and it's going to clear the depth buffer. And that would be the same as calling GL clear twice, one with color buffer and one with depth buffer, but we can do it in one line of code by using this. And I will teach you about bits and bit, this is called a bitwise operation, the bitwise or. I will teach you about that because it's going to come in very, very handy. So that will clear that. Now, uh, I actually remember now there are some other things we need to initialize up here. So let's go here. We're going to say uh, GL set or GL set attribute. Uh, SDL GL set attribute. Uh, SDL GL swap window. No, swap. SDL GL double buffer. There we go. SDL GL double buffer is what I'm trying to do. And we're going to set that to a 1. <clears throat> so what this does is it tells uh, SDL that we want to double buffer. And I don't think this is on by default. And what that means is instead of having one texture or one window, basically, one little window pane that we draw to and then we clear and draw to and clear over and over again, instead we're going to have two windows. One we're going to be drawing to while the other one is being cleared and vice versa. And this keeps it from flickering. It just uh, it makes it much, much smoother. You definitely want to have this enabled. And uh, I think and we'll come back if it doesn't work. It probably won't work. That's fine. And so all of our rendering code now is going to go in here. And then at the end of draw game, what we're going to want to do is swap the buffer. So we set double buffer. Now we want to do what's called swapping the buffer. So if we have, uh, for instance, let's say we have two buffers. We have A and B. If we're drawing to the A buffer, which is just our window, right? Our A window. 
We're going to draw to that, and then we're going to put it on the screen. And then the next frame, we're going to switch and start drawing to B. So we're going to call SDLGL swap window, and that's going to switch to B. So now we're rendering to B, and we're clearing A. Just like that. Pretty simple. So down here, we're going to call SDLGL swap window. And this is going to basically flush everything we've drawn to the screen. That's pretty much all you need to know about it. And we're going to put our window in here. All right. So that's going to do that. Uh, what we should do also is set a background color. And we don't need to set the background color every time we draw the game. We only have to set the background color once. So let's go ahead and set it up here. And the way you set the background color, and this is in init systems, is you type GL clear, or sorry, GL clear color. And this is going to set what color it's going to clear to whenever you call GL clear GL color buffer bit. So every time you call this, it's going to set the whole background color to this color. And so what it does is it takes four arguments for red, blue, uh, blue green, and alpha. And it's a number between 0 and 1. So 1 would be 100% blue, 0 would be 0% blue. So if we typed 0, 0, 0, and then you always want alpha to just be 1.0 for the most alpha. If we did this, this would be black. And if we did 1, 1, 1, that would be white. So let's clear it to... Uh, blue. So we're going to say 0.0f, because these are actually floats, 0.0f, and RGB 0.0f. So the blue component we're going to say is 1.0f. So that should make it a solid blue color. So let's go ahead and see if we've got this right so far. Let's see if we can get solid blue on the screen. There's a good chance that there won't be any blue on the screen, but I'm hoping we'll see blue. There we go, we see blue. So that much is working at least. Now let's see if we can get a triangle drawn to the screen. Now this is going to, remember, this is going to be using immediate mode. Very bad to use. I'm only using it now because it's really easy. So to do immediate mode, and you don't need to memorize this stuff, what we're going to do is type GL begin, and we're inside the parentheses we're going to say what kind of polygon we want to draw. And you pretty much always want to draw either triangles or points or something like that. So we're going to say GL triangles in there. So that will say we are drawing triangles. And then you're going to say GL end. So inside this GL begin GL end, you're going to put all of your function calls to add a bunch of vertices. And you can already tell this is really ugly because we got to make all of these function calls just for one triangle. It's awful. So what we have to do is specify each vertex one at a time for the triangle. Now a vertex, let's open up paint. Paint. So here is a blank piece of paper. All right, so here you can pretend this is our window. So a vertex is just a point. Uh, in the triangle. So let's uh, make little, I'll make little circles for the vertices. So let's say this is our window. Let's say I put a vertex here and a vertex here and a vertex here. Now the way triangles works is you always add three vertices at a time and each time you add three vertices it makes a, t a new triangle. So whenever we draw this triangle, uh, whenever we add these three vertices, it's automatically going to draw lines from here to here and then back to here. The order in which you specify the vertices basically affects how this line is going to be drawn. So if we make this vertex first and then this vertex, then this is how it's going to draw the line. And then this vertex, it'll draw the line here. And then last but not least, it will automatically connect your first and last vertices together to give you a triangle. And then we can color this triangle and things like that. If we wanted to make a square, what we would do is we would do one, two, three vertices for a triangle. So here it's going to make a triangle like this. There we go. There's one triangle. And then we have to make three more vertices. So we actually have to make six vertices for a square, at least for now. You don't have to do that. We'll learn that later. So then we'll make another three vertices. One, two, three. Like that. And then we're going to draw lines from here, here, and here. So there's a square, a very bad looking square. So let's just go ahead and make uh, one triangle for now using this very horrible um, immediate mode. And the first thing we need to do for immediate mode is we need to enable color. So we to do that we do gl enable client state. And this is a function call we're probably never going to use again after this episode. And we're going to say gl uh, color uh, array, I think. Yes, gl color array. And that will say we want to be able to color it. Then in here for gl begin triangles, we're going to say gl vertex 2f. So this makes one vertex. So Let's do it so that, uh, let's just make like a, just an arbitrary triangle. So let's start the first vertex at 0, 
comma zero. So that'll start it in one of the corners. Then let's make the next vertex at zero comma 500 pixels in the y direction. And then the third vertex let's do at 500 pixels in the x direction and 500 pixels in the y direction. There we go. So we'll do that and we want to color it so we can type gl color 3f and this will color that vertex and I think we actually have to do this maybe just once we'll see. So for gl color 3f just like gl clear color we just type in uh, a number from 0 to 1 for red, green, and blue. And you'll notice this 2f means there's two parameters. 3f means there's three parameters. Pretty simple concept. Since we're drawing in 2D, we're using 2f. If we wanted to do 3D drawing, we would use 3f. So for the color, uh, since our background is blue, let's make the color red, like that. So 0.0f, 0.0f. So that'll give us a red triangle, hopefully. Now, I'm hoping this is going to work. Let's go ahead and run it. There we go, we got our little triangle. So there we go, we have made our first triangle. As we can see, uh, it looks like the x-axis is actually reversed with OpenGL. Uh, the y-axis is top to, top to bottom, but the x-axis is right to left, at least in this case. We're going to probably have to write a little code to you know, flip the x-axis, but it's actually really easy to do. Uh, there's our triangle. We're not going to use immediate mode pretty much, uh, much, much at all anymore. In the next episode, I want to go ahead and teach you about bitwise operations so you understand what this is uh, and it uh, just makes more sense for you. You don't really need to know this yet, but it is important, so I'm going to go ahead and show it to you. Thanks, guys.